What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the EAFC career mode, it's episode number 33, man, nothing comes easy for little Lou in town does it, qualifying for our Europa League group stage, only to find out we got Bayer Leverkusen, enjoying a really good resurgence under Xavi Alonso in the preliminary round. Excellent, looking forward to that. Uh, yeah, returning today though, I'm uh, going to enter the January transfer window. Uh, we just have had the FA Cup third round draw, by the way. And once again, it is a side outside the Premier League. Getting the luck with the early draws and the cups there with uh, QPR. But there's loads to get through today, so let's just crack straight on. First game on the back of a much needed win at home to Helsinki. Everton away in the Premier League, where to be fair, we haven't won in the league since the start of November. Really awful run. We want to try and get it sorted here at Goodison. Come on, Liam. Duke down the left in space out of bio asking for it oh and when i'm missing chances like that you can see why i'm on a windless run domestically that is such a disappointing finish come on man i'm so poor recently i'm better than this i know i'm better than this Oh, save and long shot blocked as well. Come on. Need a goal, need a win. I'd be so annoyed if I don't win this game off. Defended really well. Everton haven't had a sniff. It's not defense that's my problem, man. It's going forward. Don't score enough. And, well, speaking of, oh, I don't believe it. When you're down, you're down bad. Abdullah and Decoro drills home, and Everton have taken lead against the run of play. This is ridiculous, man. Absolutely ridiculous. Well, making a treble change here. I often get asked, actually, in the comments. I do see it from you guys saying, uh, why do you not make changes? I do. Uh, I just don't normally show them in the video because it obviously is harder to condense what is already normally quite a, a long episode. But made a treble change here. And let's see if Danny Loder off the bench can do what he's been doing quite regularly for me since he's come in on a free transfer. I can't believe I'm going to lose this game, honestly. But I said it in the last episode, this is, this is one of the most challenging installments in EA's franchise I have ever played. Because you get very little luck and you get very little help. Still time, but we need a leveller. Can't believe we're going to lose this. Genuinely, defended brilliantly all game long. The one shot on my goal. The one chance. And it's going to be what is a game winner. So frustrating. Last chance here. Danny. Can you feed it through the gap? O'Hare on the edge. Dispossessed. I can't believe I've lost that. I don't know what to say. I really don't. Like, the thing is, I'm not even playing that badly. But that is this year's game in a nutshell. You get very little in the way of the rubber to green. It makes for a great challenge, but also <clears throat> so frustrating as well. My word. And so for the following game, I'm going to make a few changes, including tactically and with our shape, and go 4-1-2-1-2. Diamond wide. We'll have very little in the midfield, but hopefully a much more threatening attacking presence. Manchester United, a power court, the next one up. Might notice now the, uh, the youth players are beginning to take over. This left back on the ball, 86 rated here, midway through season four. It's the rise of the regens, if you will. It's a cool little film name, that. But uh, yeah, like a dystopian world where it's like iRobot, but replace the robots with regens. iRegen, I don't know what I'm talking about here. I'm just trying to nervously defend the first attack from the flank. But Logan steps inside. Rashford looking to turn. Gets away. And I just can't put a tackle in. Murich, great save. Jude with the cool footwork. Back to Onana. And... Camerini International hoofs it long, but Renchi boy should win that, and he does. I'm going to slide it through the gap there. It's a lovely ball through. Yes! Oh, it's a brilliant ball to thread the needle to Alvarez. And once I had the lit on his shoulder, when you're in a situation like that, just make sure you don't do anything silly and keep that man behind you. Because the chances are, if he's going to tackle you, he's going to have to foul you. And that gives away a penalty. Just make sure you shield the ball in that situation there. Elijah only his second of the year, but it's a big one. Luton in front. Yeah, I'm not really the sort of person you should be taking tips from. Especially when it comes down to scoring goals in this year's game. I'm probably the last person you should take tips from. But that is one thing I would suggest. If you do step in from the flank and you've got your man, 
basically just right behind you. Just shield the ball. Shield the ball. Don't feel the need to go at pace and attack at pace. Just make sure you keep it in your possession and keep that man right behind you. That's where you want it, right behind you. Don't allow him to be able to step in and nick that ball away from you. Hold on, guys. Oh, I've absolutely cocked that one right to death. It's fine. It's fine. Still needing my one. Keep a clean sheet. Get the three points. Mendes to Renshi. And now Duke has had a bio in there. And... Oh, brave goalkeeper by Onana. Little shot to Elijah. Who drags it wide. What I'm noticing with playing with a two-man strike duo is that we're constantly causing the CBs to widen the gap between one another. So there's often going to be a little bit of room to work the ball in to the partner of whoever's carrying the ball. At the moment, that's working really, really well. I know some of you have been suggesting in the comments, Doxy Boy, try going two up top, mate. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for the suggestions because at the moment in this game, it's been working really well. The real question is now, can we hold on? And the answer is, of course, no. Anthony, back to Jude Bellingham. Oh, there's no, there's no one marking in the middle. They're totally left for Logan free. Oh, and from a goal up, we've absolutely bottled her. No wins in eight. This is definitely one of, if not the most toughest version of EA's game I've ever played. Now, Divine's gone down. Season four, and I'm having my worst run of four with a save. This is such a difficult game to play, man. So difficult. Can't buy a win right now. Literally cannot buy a win. Eight games in a row in the league without tasting victory. And this one has slipped through our fingers in the second half. Yep, I just said it a moment ago and I'll say it again. For those that enjoy watching me struggle, well, I hope you get in your fill. Because this is so, so tough for me, man. Worst run of form, and it's season four. Oh, and this is the last three I need. Not now, guys. Come on. Like, is it like, are you gonna, like, wanna walk away now? I've got bigger problems on my hands. Oh, who was it? I think it was Baran, that, uh, that left winger, who, to be fair, does look pretty decent, to be fair, so I'll give him a deal. And it was the other one, uh, Joshua Leonard, as well. But to be fair, we did want to clear the backlog, and that's what we're doing now. This guy is so lowly rated. I'll give him a pro deal, but yeah. Come on, I, I, I need something positive. Oh, hang on, how bad was that injury for Divine? Oh, it's five days, okay, not not too bad. Went straight in the archive, that. So that's not too bad, thankfully. Uh, we just missed this uh, Newcastle game, but uh, goodness gracious. I'm, like, I'm liking the fact we have had quite a few more injuries this year. Not the fact that Cox has broken his toe twice, but even so, we had a lot more knocks than usual. Uh, because of the fact we are playing in Europe, that makes total sense. Right, uh, third game, final one of the first half of the season and of December as it's match day 19. And we dropped out of the top 10 now. Do you want to start the season? We're in the top four. Goodness gracious me. Talk about getting snapped back to reality. Oh, there goes gravity. Quite literally. We're right on the floor right now in terms of confidence. Now, at some point, we might also have to entertain the possibility. Have we taken Luton as far as they can go? You know, at some point we just... Oh, I didn't even press anything there. At some point we just might have to entertain the possibility we have taken Luton Town as far as we can take them. I mean, we've got them into Europe. We've got them to a cup final. I, I don't want to leave until we've won them a major honour. And their first since 1988. But... And at some point, we're going to have to sit ourselves down and ask ourselves a very honest and frank question. And that is, have we taken this Luton team as far as we can take them? It's something we'll need to ask ourselves. Oh, goodness gracious me. I, Almi Almiron's dribbling in this game has just been... Unstoppable. Yep, uh, do you know what? This is a question I am going to throw out to you guys right now. Have we, ta like, have we taken Luton as far as we can? Honestly, realistically, have we gone as far as we can with Luton? Europa League, Cup Final, really, really nice. But 
is this as far as we can take them? Is it time we start wondering, with certain teams out of form this year, including the Gunners, is it time we start to think, well, if the job comes up, we'd definitely consider it. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. The away fans are housed high up in the heavens at St. James's, but there's a pocket of booze coming from the crowd. I can tell you now, it's not from the home end. Newcastle get the three points, but for Luton, another game without a win, and now three losses on the trot. I think the fans are beginning to run out of patience with Doxy Boy. And so what it means is at the official halfway point, the Red Devils out in front and still undefeated, five clear of Man City with West Ham and Spurs making up the top four. But there's a real cluster of teams from Spurs all the way down really to I'd say Bournemouth in 10th place. But even just below that, there's Burnley and then us who have now dropped to 12th place in the table. And the thing at the start of the season, we were daring to dream about the Champions League. Well, now I'm starting to worry in this form about the Championship. Whole half of the season to sort this out, but man, January's here and I think we've got to do something. Well, with 12 million in the budget, I mean, we can't actually do anything unless we sell someone because 12 million is not going to bring you in a forward that's going to score you enough goals at this stage of the season as well. So, uh, yeah, we need to keep an open mind for transfers that come in. Maybe give you the chance. The Bartman's itching for a uh, for a pro deal, 66 rated, 90 to 94 potential. I'm uh, I'm not too sure. I guess we'll have to wait and see. But uh, as January does come round, I mean that, that's that's one way to make some cash. Yeah, I don't know. I quite like him to be honest. I I, I kind of see this guy as my uh, successor for Murich. So without being the case, I'm going to turn it down. And uh, if a big comes in again, I'll I'll, I'll definitely consider selling. But I, I do like him as my successor for, um, for, um, for, um, Murich. Right, uh, sorry, my mind is going a blank. Uh, do you know what's also going blank? Uh, our win ratio. So, following game, West Ham away, and Lord knows we need at least a point. West Ham right now in the top four. This is going to be a tough one. After this, QPR in the cup. After no wins in nine in the league. we got to get something here. Come on. You know, there's that, uh, that saying, it will come when you least expect it. You know, like, uh, like they, I get that a lot because like, I'm, I'm the only single friend in my group. Typical. Um, and, and, and they said to me, I was like, oh, yeah, come when you least expect it. You know, come when you least expect it. And I'm like, well, it hasn't come yet, has it? <laughs> I'm waiting. You said that last year. You know, that's kind of how I feel with Luton right now. Oh, that win will come when you least expect it. Well, can it hurry up, please? Because I'm getting tired of this. Oh man, I hope you get mate. Yep, with him. And Alcaraz on the chest. And long. What a ball. <gasps> it's not the man I wanted in this situation. Obviously. Still searching for his first loot and goal. He smacked the woodwork. Vinegar! This is the frustrating thing about this run. I'm not even playing badly. I'm just not winning. I don't know how to explain. I'm doing all the right things. I mean it. But it's just not coming off for me. Oh, he's looking for space to turn. And there's a cluster of claret shirts there waiting and queuing up in the middle for that ball. And one's going to get it in Serge Gnabry. And he's on the drill. So that's where you need your AI marking to be stronger. Because I don't think really they'll switch when that ball's played across so quickly. I, I'm going to ask the question again. Have we taken Luton as far as we realistically can? No one's going to want me mid-season, not in this form, but at the end of the season? With certain teams underperforming? Maybe it's time to dust off the old TV. I so badly want to win them a major honour, but I think last year... Blimey, that is so lucky. Is probably the best chance we'll ever get. Lucky, lucky, lucky Luton. But when you're down bad, you need some luck. Oh, no, 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 no. Come on. Worked hard to get back on level terms. Well done on your dicker. Get on the floor. There we go. And, oh, goodness. Like, how quick they can make the interception compared to you is ridiculous. Like, like there was twice where Ryan there could have made the interception and didn't. Whereas Ben Johnson stuck out a leg. Like he was uh, offering his services like a lady in the night. 
I don't know what that means. But it's 2 1 West. I can't believe this, man. We just cannot get anything at the moment. Nothing is going our way. I know I've said this like 10 times now, but it, it just does kind of explain the the overpoweredness of form. When you're in good form, you go to the burner bar, you can win 3 0, mate. You, you're in bad form, and it's basically impossible to bust out of it. I think the rest of this season might well define the entire save. Sacked in the morning, you're getting sacked in the morning, sacked in the morning. You get it, kind of like explains the ridiculousness of the manager rating and stuff, though, doesn't it? Like last season, when we were on the brink of Europe and a, a cup final season as well. The board were like, oh, mate, what are you doing, you know? And, and now we're on a, a no-winning 10 run in the league. And the board's like, I sleep. I do not see this. You're doing a great job. Keep going. So the browse job section, as we know, is kind of broken in uh, in CM. Like, no, none of these clubs would want me right now. And why would they be hired? Why, why, why would that be a potential job opening right now? Um... But in the, in the new season, I would say, with so many teams not performing as well as they would probably hope, Newcastle in 7th, Liverpool down to 6th as well, Chelsea in 8th, for example. At the end of the season, I definitely think they might consider a change of management. And we have done well with Luton, but like I said before, maybe we've taken them as far as we can. i tell you what it is to screw this over. The injuries to Cox. No Cox, no party. You know how it goes. Right, following game, QPRO. If we don't win this game, man, I might just resign. Goodness gracious. This needs to be a win. This is the gimme we need. And right off the bat, we'll take the lead. Danny Loder. With the finish, looted in front. Oh, come on. <sighs> Listen, when you're going for a dry spell, you take anything you can get. Don't I know it? Come on! A win is a win, boys. A win is a win. When you are going for a barren run, you take what you can get. Less said about the Premier League for the better, but at least put us in the fourth round here. The relief, man, honestly. I can't even tell you how much I needed that. Uh, so, oh, by the way, for, for those that have been asking about uh, Charlie Patino, uh, he's at Lazio right now. So, not sure we can really realistically get him, but uh, great suggestion and definitely one for the future. There's another bid for Ethan Wood from an Italian side, this time Roma. Maybe they're, uh, they're well, too, I actually don't mind that, they're long term successor for uh, Rui Patricio. Yeah, I kind of saw this guy as my successor for Murich, but then again, we've got Peter who's out on loan at West Ham right now. And, uh, yeah, Roma, of course, you know, in recent years, Chris Smalling, Tammy Abraham, I know Ethan Wood is Welsh, but even so. Um, and and knowing Mourinho's loving with Patricia, I guess, well, at some point, they've got to move on, Mourinho. Maybe it's uh, it's Ethan Wood you can have. Right, following game, bottom place, Palace, and I hate to be that guy, but if we don't win this game, we are in trouble. Heading to the part, main tactical switch, 4-2-2-2. Two, two, two. Let's see how we get on. Oh, 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 chance here, real chance. As soon as he was in trouble, Loder's got a finish. Oh, what a save! <laughs> Dean Henderson, what a save, man. Oh, I don't know what to say. That, this is just crazy. What a stop. And we still are tied. Incredible save. Oh no, come on. Oh, what a touch. Murich. Well done. Well done. Oh, I don't know what to say. How did Denderson make that save, man? Incredible goalkeeping. Yeah, well, in Basuma, nicely done, mate. And Alcaraz to Loder on the turn. And drag some blue and red shirts out. There we go. There we go. Oh, look at the space. Duke. No way should Clement Long let come across there. And I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to do it. When you're down bad, you need to pull out all the stops. Gabriel Long continues his good form and tries to drag Luton into good form with him. 
cut that goal, but Lord knows we needed it. Gabe is like the uh, the rose that grew out of concrete. Fifth in 20, averaging one in four. Scored in that FA Cup third round as well. I mean, he is the guy that right now signed that big extension in the summer, of course. So we've got him tied down for another few years, but there is absolutely no doubt about it. If we do drop out of Europe, which, you know, based on the form, is looking very likely, he'll have to go in the summer. There is no way this guy should not be playing European football of some level. Game! Do as many somersaults as you want, mate, because I feel like doing it on the sidelines. Come on! After none in our last ten in the league. Luton are back to winning ways. Thank the Lord for that. Probably the easiest game we could have had. Hey, you can only beat what's in front of you. Massive, absolutely massive three points. Right, let's um, let's see what we've got in the fourth round, the FA Cup next as well. Lord knows we uh, we could do with a kind draw. If uh, well, we'll find out in a minute. But uh, firstly, there we go. Jose Mourinho has got his successor, reluctantly, to uh, Rui Patricio. And it's Ethan Wood who will join Chris Smalling and Tammy Abraham's Brits that have left there in recent years. Not a bad move for him. Going to be number one at Roma. He'll take that. And I'm still waiting for that draw. Oh, there it is. Just seen it right there. It's, uh, the Czech Republic have now uh, put in the management offer for me. But at the moment, guys, it's a nice offer. But I've got bigger things on my uh, on my plate right now. But I have seen it. It's uh, Cardiff City away. And that's actually our next fixture as well. So I think... We'll play that one, and after that we've got deadline there as well. So what, what's our budget now? I think it must be about 22 million, surely. Yeah, 22 million pounds in the transfer budget after the Wood deal goes through. I still don't think it's enough for a new class striker though. If we're going to get one, we'll have to offload either Elijah or Danny, or, well, heaven forbid, Duke, because I really like Duke. Right, final game away against Cardiff. Normally, I'd rest my entire team for this one, but right now, taking no chances. A place in the fifth round away till we can get through the Welsh side. And that will also be, I'll whisper it quietly, three wins on the chart. <laughs> Come on, Luton Town, don't bottle this. I mean, to be fair, those three wins would be against two championship sides and a bottom place team in the league. So it's not it's not solving the problem. Instead, it's papering over the cracks. But you know what? I mean, right now, I'm sick of looking at those cracks. So <laughs> I'll take anything I can get. Minchie to Suma as we'll work our way forward. Shari sees Barkley breaking the line and... Oh, it's a cracking ball. Cracking, cracking ball. And Elijah says, calm down, okay? Form is temporary, class is permanent. Barkley's always had it. It's yours, Connor, there we go. Five minutes to go before the break. Shot clock is off, you know, we love to do this. Final few minutes, clock management. Hold on to the ball. It means that we'll get the last shot of the game, or the half, I should say. And it won't give our uh, our opponents enough time to respond with one of their own. With Jashari. Through to Adebayo. Shot clock's off. And we've taken advantage. 2-0 Luton. 2 for Elijah. And maybe 3 on the trot for the Hatters. Oh, Adebayo. Surely. What a chance. Oh, no. Oh, please. Oh, straight to the keeper. Either side of it, that's a sick goal from the boss, man. He, if I hit that, either side of the goalkeeper, that's in. So much power behind it, but I just didn't get the direction right. Oh, the deck Ainsley, there we go. And, oh, Barkley's pulled up there. But, oh, look at him. He's, oh, no. <laughs> it's time to hang him up, mate. It's time to hang them up. You know when you're pulling up with no one around it. It's actually one of the scariest sights you see in sports, isn't it? You know when you see someone pull up and there was not a single player, even within their vicinity. It's actually quite a scary sight to see. But uh, for Barkley, I think he's just tired. I think he's ready for bed. <laughs> even so, we'll have that free on the bounce. And finally, we are back to form. And so, we shall end with deadline day. Uh, but I don't think we'll do anything. I mean, we, it's 22 million, so I feel like we should do something. But, I mean, we're finally back to form and putting the ball in the back of the net and defending. So, do we just ride this mini wave? I mean, because really, with the, with the money we've got, it's not enough to make a major improvement. If we're bringing someone in, it's mainly just for the squad. I mean, I wouldn't mind a, uh, a new winger to come off the bench. 
especially with a Cox injury. And oh, oh, Barkley was Barkley. Uh, was Barkley hurt? Was it an injury or was it? I think he. I think he just wanted to go to bed. I think. I think he's fine. He just. <laughs> He was like, Do you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm too late for this, man. I'm, I'm too old for this now. It's time. <laughs> we thought he was injured. He was just sleeping. Oh, just looking at the list of forward players here. I know that Kristovic was a player that was uh, recommended quite a lot in the comments. Uh, can't really afford him, though. I would say about another sale. Levi Garcia on a big wage, though, at Monza. Is available a cut price deal, but it needs to take a pay cut for my liking. Eddie and Ketia, maybe bring him back to the to the Premier League. Um, but if if Loder and uh, and Adebayo get scoring, I guess we don't really need one. But then again, Ricardo Pepe stood at PSV. I'd really like him. Good young American forward on a reasonably low wage as well. Thing is though, we'd have to uh, we'd have to sell someone for that deal to come off there. I'd say because we've got to pay the wages and a sign-on bonus too. That means our budget really is around 20 million as opposed to around 22 to 23. So yeah, gotta gotta remind yourself of that these days. The, the budget is also gonna be taken out with the wages and the sign-on fees too. Six hours to go, not a single bid for any of our players though. Yep, we uh, aren't gonna make a sale in the end. So the band's gonna to stay together. And I think, to be fair, I, I, I might bring in like a, uh, a winger for the bench to come off because Karsdorp's more of a defence-based player. Well, really a jack of all trades. And O'Hare, as much as I like him, mm, probably could do with an upgrade there on the wings, I would say. With Cox still down and Vidigal, again, he's more of a squad winger. Hasn't quite got the quality. There's a few names on the shortlist. Suleiman are at Saints. I'd really like a bit out of our price range right now. Hudson Adoy and uh, an Alanga though, really keen on both. Lost a scout of what Hudson Adoy, but I'd say it'd be about 16, 17 million probably. Um, and Alanga, you know, I've signed Hudson Adoy in so many saves, and I have said with this year, I'm trying to sign players I haven't actually signed before. I don't think I've ever signed Anthony Alanga before. He's got a fantastic charm, and he's got some great potential as well. I'm, I'm going to go for him on deadline, though. Yep, trying my best in this save to sign players I don't normally go for. They want to take Cars door, but he's only been here for, uh, well, six months. So, 18 million, and Steve Cooper says yes. Great chant on this guy. If you've not heard of it, it's, it's really, really good. And uh, we'll be hearing it at uh, Power Court now. Well, um, I actually didn't realise he was on such a high contract. For our standards, anyway. Um, I don't... I mean, to be honest, it's not actually that much more than what we're currently paying our players right now. But it is still a little bit more. I'm going to say to Anthony, drop it down a couple of grand a week. Because you know here you're getting European football that you're not getting at the city ground. And that's, to be honest, not actually that much more than what we're currently paying. I mean, it's an extra 40... He's only actually... He's only got a year left on his deal. For us. I'm going to say come down to 50. Come down to 50 for a longer-term deal and European football. And he wants it as well. So only a few grand extra a week higher than our 45 grand a week high salary. It's not actually that bad. That's, that's doable. And now we are in Europe, to be fair. Those are sort of contracts that should become the norm now. Yep, Forrest struggling down the bottom of the table. Us in Europe. Only 18 months left in this deal. It makes sense for all parties, really. Anthony Alanga signs a new four-year deal. But we've looted five goals and five assists in 19 in the lead this season for Forrest. He does know how to put the ball in the back of the net, even with his former side struggling down the bottom. That's a, that's a really solid pickup that I can play on the wing, can play through the middle. And at 24, he's still getting better as well. That's a, that's a, that's a smart pick up on deadline day that yeah i like that i like that a lot i think that's quite a realistic deal to be fair all things considered maybe the wage cut uh, possibly i'm not too sure but certainly not beyond the realms possibility so the big deals on deadline day uh, molina going to real 64.4 mil vatini is off to atalanta for just over 49 mil and fulham has strengthened big time in the center back role with diomande just the one signing on deadline day but I, I, I must say i'm happy with that and after three ones on shot and moving through to the fifth round as well Maybe, just maybe, things are starting to look up with Luton Town. I guess we'll have to wait and see. But that was this episode of the EAFC Karuma, guys. So, big fan, which I've enjoyed it. If you have, then please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And we'll come back in the next episode with the draw for the last 16 of the FA Cup. More big games in the league as well. And we'll certainly have the first leg and maybe the second leg as well of our Europa League preliminary round against Bayer Leverkusen. What a tough tie that's going to be. Have a fantastic day. Much love to you all. And I'll see you for the next episode very soon.